Hello and welcome to my latest edition on political ideas and today we're continuing with the political idea of socialism and we're going to look at socialism in the state. Now I'd love to say this is really straightforward but the difficulty with this particular um, theme when it comes to socialism is the variation across the different types of socialism is so great there isn't really a very simple answer to what would a socialist state be like. Um, so we'll, I'll do my best and we'll go through and we'll look at some of the different concepts. There is some um, commonality that runs through, but there are also some really quite strong differences. So one of the fundamental things is this idea of a strong state. Most socialists, not all, but most socialists see the, the need for some kind of really strong state. They'll play an active role in ensuring equality. And generally, socialists see uh, the state in a positive light. Um, now, there are states they want to remove, which they would see in a negative light, but a, a socialist state, a state run by socialists, they would see in a positive way and they would see that the state can do positive good to help people. Now, most socialists would agree on some form of common ownership, some kind of state control over parts of the economy. Uh, and the, the degree of that will vary between different socialist thinkers and different types of socialism. Uh, and they they argue about the degree or form that the state's control should um, take o over uh, the population and the economy and how much power it should wield. Now, we've seen an interesting example of that in the UK. So the, the Labour Party had this clause four, which was this commitment to common ownership. Uh, and that was uh, often referred to as the socialist clause. And it, and it was removed or watered down under Blair's government because the third way is one form of socialism, which probably weakens the state, uh, the position of the state and the requirements of the state to interfere, particularly in the economy, compared to the other forms. But generally speaking, a common thread you would find under most socialists when it comes to the state is the state will play a positive, active role in bringing about equality and therefore will need to be reasonably strong. Now. As we look at some of the more extreme forms of socialism, and this is really the mind blowing bit about some socialist thinking, it is if you look at Marxism, they talk about this dictatorship of the proletariat. Uh, and what that state will do is it will destroy all the kind of liberal capitalist values that are left behind. Uh, and people will be re educated and removed. And so, what you'll then end up with is you'll end up with everybody accepting the key concepts of socialism, equality, fraternity, collectivism, and eventually there'll be no need for the state because the workers will be running the factories, the, uh, everyone will be sharing equally, there won't be any need for redistribution of wealth because everybody will have the same. Uh, and Marx then says is essentially humanity will have uh, reached the end of history and the state will wither away and die. Now, the reality is this has not happened. Um, and so it's because it would be a very difficult argument to have with Marxists because you would say, well, that's never happened. And they go, well, no, because we've not got there. But you are living in a world in which liberal capitalist values have not been completely removed. So it, to you, it would seem uh, crazy. Now, when we look at extreme kind of Marxist, particularly Leninist Marxist uh, countries, then they tend to have the strongest states. So the idea that these would ultimately then move on to withering away and dying is a difficult concept to get your head around. But a Marxist would argue this is the ultimate thing that will happen. And in the Marxist view of history, this is the final stage. Now, my, the, the whole point of socialism is, is about the collective. So they, they dismiss the idea of individual power. So any form of government that is based on an individual uh, dominating, such as a monarchy or uh, a um, other form of uh, authoritarian dictatorship would naturally seem to be opposed to socialist ideas. So any form of individual or elite rule, a socialist, you would, would say, well, that will, they'll, they'll, they'll dismiss that. And it's those kind of states that revolutionary socialists call uh, to be um, destroyed. So the autocracy of the Tsar, for example, is what the, the Bolshevik Party uh, rode up to destroy. Evolutionary socialists talk about uh, these kind of states being unpicked and, and taken apart through the ballot box. So why, given all of that, is, is socialism actually associated 
with some of the worst dictatorships in in modern day and in in history. So we would think of Stalin and Mao and Kim Jong Un as um, socialist dictators. So it seems to go completely contrary to what we would think about socialist ideas. Well, these dictatorships come from a particular form of uh, socialist thinking, which is Marxist Leninism. Uh, and that called for this kind of really strong central power to um, to destroy the kind of liberal capitalist ideas as part of the dictatorship of the proletariat. But it would appear that even the concepts of Leninist Marxism or Marxist Leninism have been unraveled and destroyed by the likes of um, St Stalin and Mao. And most uh, socialists would condemn these kind of dictatorships and see them as not being proper socialists. But this is where often a lot of fear of socialism comes from. And people would point to to Stalinist Russia or Mao, uh, Mao's China or current North Korea and go, well, if you go for a socialist state, that is what you get. Now, most socialists would argue very avidly that is not the type of state that they would want and that actually socialist thinking about the collective and everybody and, and, and equality would very much go against a kind of strict um, government with a, a single person in charge. So essentially, this is, comes, comes down to this, that with different types of socialism, you get different states. So if you have a Marxist Leninist state, then you will have what is known as democratic centralism, a one party state. And there'll be no debate outside that party. So what the party says is what's going to happen is what's going to happen. If you criticise the party from outside, you will be seen as counter-revolutionary and those kind of ideas uh, will be crushed. Now, therefore, that's again where we get this association with the socialist state being this all powerful um, state that won't um, won't stand for any kind of opposition, the kind of Orwellian idea of a state we see in books like 1984, and you'll see uh, repeated in um, other kind of <coughs> literature and films that look at this kind of terrible future. Now, socialists would argue that that isn't, or most socialists would argue that it's not the kind of state that they're looking for. So democratic socialism will say, well, we want a strong state, but we don't want that to oppress the people. Uh, we, what we want that is to, to do is to control the economy, uh, to run an extensive welfare state. And democratic socialists uh, will stand in elections against people of all other types of political persuasion and try and win the argument rather than having a one party state that dictates and takes full control of everything. Social democracy would, again, take an even more moderate form of, of state. Uh, and most social democrats would argue in terms of a government managing the economy. So their direct control would be smaller and they might do things like Keynesian e economics, trying to um, manipulate the economy so there's full employment to make sure they can uh, drive down poverty or remove poverty. They might not run as many industries as would be done under democratic socialism. There would still be a, a, a relatively extensive welfare state. So, again, as we're going down the, the page on this, we're seeing smaller and smaller states with less and less oppression. And really, it's only the version at the top that would have those oppressive tendencies. Now, the, your smallest state is going to come on one of the bottom, which is the third way. And that essentially, unlike the others, completely accepts um, the capitalist economy. And what it then tends to do is it focuses less on um, financial equality and more on things like cultural and political uh, equality. So it might, uh, for example, if we looked at the, the Blair government, it focused on access uh, to post-16 education with things like EMA, uh, you, getting the number of students going to university up, uh, that, that kind of key target of 50 percent. And then also legislation on things like uh, race, gender and sexuality, ensuring equality in those areas. So a socialist state under the third way would be a, a very different state to one under kind of more pure social democracy, which would be a different one to ones under democratic socialism, which would be a very, very different one for if we go back to Marxist Leninism. Now, 
hopefully what this can help you see is that not all socialist states are ones like Stalinist Russia, where the state is in absolute control of everything. Uh, and one of the things that the, um, the socialists don't tend to share is this idea that a powerful state will do bad things. Uh, it, it, and, and that is essentially if the state is socialist and therefore is on the side of the workers. Socialists will have a very, a very different view about a state that isn't socialist and they might see as being on the side of the elites uh, and therefore oppressing the workers. So socialist attitudes toward the state depends on the nature of the state, but it also depends on the particular brand of socialist that you're looking at. Right. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, please don't forget to like, to subscribe, uh, to comment and to respond to uh, the various polls that pop up during my videos. Right. Thank you very much again for watching. I'll speak to you all again soon.